We don't have to change everything that we do. We don't have to change the way we teach. The employers that come to us looking for students, they want students that can write. I've known Valerie, the director here, for quite some time, and I thought, I can work with these guys, they'll help me. <laughs> I really encourage those who do well to then tell the other students why they did so well. They came over here and used the Writing Center. I also think that my writing skills have been <laughs> developed because of this as well. Howdy, I'm Mandy, and welcome to Write Away, the faculty podcast of the Texas A&M University Writing Center, bringing you news, tips, and ideas for making your students better, more innovative writers. Today we're talking to Dr. Manda Rosser, Assistant Professor of Agricultural Leadership Education and Communications here at Texas A&M. Dr. Rosser earned her Master's in Leadership Studies and Ph.D. in Human Resource Development at A&M, and she currently teaches a writing intensive course in Ag Leadership called Professional Leadership Development. Dr. Rosser began by explaining her W course. We have one foundational leadership class that kind of covers everything. It's a survey class, so we cover all the foundational theories of leadership, and that's Ag Leadership 340, Professional Leadership Development. It is our writing intensive course. We have two, and um, that's our newest one. It's a unique class in that we have a Monday-Wednesday lecture with 120 students, and we meet in a large classroom, and we go over all the technical theory stuff. And then one day a week, the students divide up into groups of 24, and they have a small lab where they actually do interactive activities where we learn to apply those theories. We, one thing about leadership is a soft science, and so it's kind of sometimes hard to get your arms around it and really understand what it is. So you read the theory, and it's great. But until you apply it, you really don't understand it. So in those labs, we try to simulate activities where the students can see the theories in action and really learn to apply what they're learning in the classroom. So it's really fun that two days a week we're in, in there, and then they get to break into smaller sections and get to know one another and spend time in smaller groups doing different activities. Next, she talked about why she applied for W course status for her class. I didn't want to. I'll be really honest with you. It's one of those things I thought, you're kidding me. This is a busy class. We meet twice. We've got activities. I've got five graduate students that help me with this. What am I going to do adding one more component to this class? Are you kidding? And then, of course, the university said, you know, we need two classes. And I thought, okay, I'll do it. I've known Valerie, the director here, for quite some time. And I thought, I can work with these guys. They'll help me. <laughs> so I delve in and said, I'll volunteer to be the one to make our class writing intensive. It was amazing, and the whole process has been amazing. The funny thing was is we didn't have to change our syllabus. We were already having enough writing components to our, our class that it didn't have to have anything added to it to make it writing intensive. We just had to change how we were doing some of the writing assignments and some of the ways we taught those assignments, but we didn't do that much different. So the students come in rolling their eyes going, oh, it's a W class, we're gonna have all this writing. And I tell them, we haven't changed the syllabus. We haven't changed the number of assignments. We haven't changed how much you write. Nothing is really different. In fact, if anything, it's easier because we have the writing center to assist us and we have grading rubrics, which are absolutely phenomenal. So she also offered some advice about teaching a W course to prospective W course professors. Use the Writing Center. They're here to help us. They give us the tools. They do workshops to help make this as easy as can be. They give you examples of everything you need to do. They even come over and help you teach because we're not English professors. I was weak in writing until I got up into my graduate school and started really practicing writing and learning more how to do that. And so don't pretend that you're an English teacher. Go ahead and teach your subject and use the writing center to help you with the writing intensive components. I think one of the misnomers is oh, I've got to teach English or I'm going to have to be some great writer. That's not true. The writing center is here to help you do all that. So lean on the writing center and be open to their ideas because they really make it easy. I think that's the best thing about this place is it really makes changing all this easy. It provides the tools for the students to be successful too. It's not only helping the professors but it's helping the students so it's twofold. Next, she talked about how she promotes the Writing Center to her students. When I first changed this to a writing intensive class, I gave extra points for the students who came over here, five extra points per paper. And that's significant on a 100-point paper. Some of the students took advantage of it, some of them didn't. What I found to work even better than that, so I've taken that off my syllabus, something that works even better than that now is word of mouth. Dude, you went in 98 on that paper. How'd you do that? I went to the writing center. They did this, this, and this. Oh, you're kidding. So I'm really encouraging those students to come and... Those that are going to come are going to come anyway. And so I really encourage those who do well to then tell the other students how they did so well and why they did so well. They came over here and used the Writing Center. The other thing is, is I have the students read each other's drafts. The week before they turn in their final paper, they get to turn in a draft and grade one another's and really give each other comments. And the students who will read a paper that's already been over here and been looked at say, man, you don't have to change anything. 
well, yeah, I've already been to the writing center. So that group of 24 hears really quickly how good another student did. So I'm using the students to tell other students about the writing center. She also talked about how she developed and uses writing rubrics in her classes, as well as how she keeps her class running smoothly. I had all my assignments, and I had this little description of what they were supposed to write, and then I had these little areas of criteria with little blanks and little points assigned, and I thought it was great until the writing rubrics. And I went to a workshop that the writing center did, and we developed one, and I went back and Everything I do, graduate students down to my undergraduates, I do everything on a writing rubric now. If they do a presentation, I have a rubric. If you follow a rubric, it's laid out for you. And so that's been probably the most helpful tool. Besides making it easy and laying it out, your expectations, the students have no questions. If they read that rubric, it is point blank right there in front of them. Do what the rubric says and they know what they're going to get. And you have that student that doesn't care if they're going to get a C and they'll do just enough to get a C, but at least they knew what they were doing when they got it. The other thing that is when I have five graduate students helping me with these five sections of students, the grading can sometimes be really inconsistent. It is no longer inconsistent. 120 students, five people grading, and last semester I did this little tally, and there was no more than a four-point spread in their averages for their classes on their grading. So to me, the consistency is great because I'm, I used to, and I would grade papers myself, I'd read them once, and I'd put them in three stacks, the good, bad, and the ugly is what I'd call them. Then I'd go back and grade the good and kind of reread all those and give them feedback, and then I'd grade the second pile and the third pile. And I no longer have to do that. I use a grading rubric, and I know I'm going to be consistent across the board. So it really helps the whole process. And the students, I think they like them. I think at first they're a little overwhelming. There's this big box with a lot of little blanks, and they wonder how it's going to work. But once they've used one and they've gotten feedback on it, they don't want to go back. They want to continue to get rubrics. So I think they're really happy with them. As far as other techniques and organizing it, I really use my graduate students. They are the ones who do most of the grading for the class because there's 120. But one thing that we do is we meet weekly and we go over the running assignments. We answer their questions. And the other thing we do is we bring in the top two best papers that they've read and the bottom two worst papers. And we share those with one another. And we talk about how we can encourage those that aren't doing so well to do well. We also pair up those students who are really good helping those that aren't very good when they do their draft reviews so that I get that really good student helping that student who doesn't have really good writing abilities yet. So there's several things that we're doing just in-house with our graduate students to help not only them and their grading and their feedback but also how the students can help one another and I think that that's been fairly helpful. Next, she talked about how she uses low-stakes writing assignments in her classes. I make my low-stakes writing assignments fun, and they really get into them. One of them is they watch a movie, <laughs> and then they compare and do some leadership stuff with that. And all they care about is they get to watch a movie. <laughs> so I really try to make them innovative and fun so that they're like, oh, you're kidding me, I have another paper to write, this is busy work, they roll their eyes kind of thing again. Well, if I make it more interactive and more fun for them, that really gets them excited. Um, I do case studies as well, so that they feel like they're actually using what they know, they're solving a problem, they're answering something instead of, oh, I've gotta go do all this research and find it. No, I want you to know what, use what you already know and solve this problem. So I try to make them interactive, I try to make them a little bit more exciting than just, oh, another paper. And I think that tends to help. I don't really focus on the fact that they have low stakes and high stakes papers. I just try to help them understand that they're all important. I don't really say, this is just a two page paper or a four page paper. I'm like, oh, it's another assignment and this is how we're going to get to do it. So I really don't try to differentiate. I mean, they obviously know because the points that are assigned, but I don't really focus on that. Next, we asked Dr. Rosser if she hears from former students about the benefits they reap from her writing course. Constantly. I wish our students knew that. And not only do I hear back from former students, but the employers that come to us looking for students, they want students that can write. Almost every student that I hear back from, which in our departments are a lot because we stay pretty close with our students, all of them say I never dreamed I'd be doing this much writing, it, whether it's a memo or just emails. You, know, you don't send the same kind of email to your boss that you do to your friend. And so just everyday writing, they realize how important writing is, but how much time they spend actually writing as well. So I hear that constantly, and I hear it from employers. We want students who can write, and when we tell them that we have two writing intensive classes in our department and that our students get this kind of feedback, we can almost show them how much our students have developed in their writing abilities that really encourages them to continue to look at our students. So I think it's been a plus for us. She also talked about the way she uses technology in her class. I don't like technology. I do. I do. I love it. I just say I don't because I've got to learn it. And so my first thought is, oh, technology. Um, I'm kind of like those students with writing assignments. Oh, writing assignment. But it definitely made things easier. I put things online. 
Um, one is just the resources that are online from the writing center. I mean, I can go on there and be like, oh, click here, PowerPoint, look. Or, oh, look, another example of a writing rubric. I hadn't thought about that. And so just the fact that the amount of information I can get to and my students, the resources my students can get to because we have wonderful technology, that's been very helpful. Um, as far as actually affecting the way I teach, besides using the references and the materials and the resources that are provided for me, um, I, you know, I do use WebBeast to, to upload different things for my students as well. But if they have questions about writing and actually affecting the way that I teach what I do with the writing portion of my class, it all comes from the Writing Center. So the fact that I have your resources, it makes it a lot easier. Finally, Dr. Rosser left us with a few more thoughts about the Writing Intensive course and its benefits. I think at first we all get caught up that this is a writing intensive course and it overshadows the fact that it's just one more way to assess our student learning outcomes. We don't have to change everything that we do. We don't have to change the way we teach. I think it actually is a benefit because not all of our students have the same learning styles. And this is one more opportunity for our students to succeed and to grow and develop. And if, instead of focusing on the fact that we're adding more writing to their work, looking at, wow, we're probably helping some students who don't test well or those students who work better in other ways, if we were to provide them the opportunity and be positive about it, I think it would definitely make the outlook a little bit better. I also think that my writing skills have been <laughs> developed because of this as well. Just the amount of feedback that I give and the amount of time I spend learning and looking and utilizing some of the resources that are out there, um, I think it's probably improved not only me, but myself as well as my graduate students. And so I think this is a well-rounded opportunity to help a lot of people I enjoy my writing intensive course. Like I said, I didn't have to change my syllabus that much. So it's been a good opportunity for me just to better what I was already doing. For more information about the topics discussed in this podcast, please visit our website at www.writingcenter.tamu.edu. Thank you for joining us for Write Away. Write Away is a production of the University Writing Center at Texas A&M. This podcast serves the mission of the Writing Center by providing a resource to help literacy and written communication skills at Texas A&M University. We'd like to thank Dr. Rosser for her time today and for her dedication to writing instruction at Texas A&M. I'm your host, Mandy Crawford, hoping you'll join us next time and reminding you, when you get the chance, write away.